Hello and welcome to episode three of my sports and exercise science series. We're going to be following on from episode two by beginning to learn about the key principles in anatomy and physiology, specifically the musculoskeletal system. Let's kick the video off by looking at two key terms, which are anatomy and physiology. What do these words actually mean? And what's the difference between the two? Anatomy. Anatomy is the study of structures that make up the human body. In future episodes, we'll be learning about the skeleton, heart, lungs, and muscles. So in those lessons, we're learning about the body's anatomy. Think of human anatomy as what makes up the body. There are a few subtopics when it comes to anatomy, including surface anatomy. This is the study of anatomical landmarks that can be identified by observing the surface of the body, sometimes called superficial anatomy. Microscopic anatomy, this is the study of minute anatomical structures on a microscopic scale, including cells, cytology and tissues, histology. Finally, we have gross or macroscopic anatomy, the study of anatomical features visible to the naked eye, such as internal organs and external features. Let's now look at the term physiology. Physiology is the study of how structures of the body function. The physiology of the heart, for example, looks at how it functions as a pump to supply oxygenated blood to tissues of the body. How would this now apply to sports and exercise science? Well, a physiologist can work alongside athletes to help improve their performance, reduce the chance of injury, provide information on how the body adapts to different training environments, and interpret results of how well the body is functioning. So what's the simple takeaway of all of this? Human anatomy is the study of the body's structures. Physiology is the study of how those structures work. Let's now look at the structural organization of the body. The human body is organized into six different levels and each level builds on the previous level to take us from atoms and molecules up to who you are today. Level one, the chemical level. The chemical level is the simplest level and starts with atoms which make up every material thing in the universe, including our bodies. When atoms bond together, they create molecules, which are larger chemical groupings. When molecules bond together, they create macromolecules. In the human body, atoms, including carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, can combine together to form molecules such as water, sugar and proteins. Level 2. The cellular level. Molecules combine to form cells that are the smallest formed units of the human body. There are many different types of cells that make up over 50,000 different structures within the human body. All cells have specific structures in common, such as a nucleus, membrane, and DNA. Structures, however, can differ in size and shape to enable them to perform the different functions required of them. Level three, the tissue level. Tissue is a group of similar cells that have developed from the same part of the embryo and all perform a certain function. An example would be that groups of muscle cells will make muscles. There are four different types of tissue within the human body. These are connective tissue, muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, and nervous tissue. Level four, the organ level. Organs are made up of different types of tissues that together can perform the different functions of the body. Organs are recognizable structures of the body, such as the heart, lungs, and stomach, for example. Level five, the systems level. Systems are formed by a number of organs working together for the same common function. There are 11 major systems within the human body, and we'll be learning more about these as we go through the series. Systems that work together include the respiratory system, which takes oxygen in, and the cardiovascular system that transports oxygen to various parts of the body. Finally, we have level six, the organism level. The overall human organism is made up of all of the previous levels we've just covered. When all of the systems of the human body combine, we have the organism level. We can only function the way we do by the 11 systems working together to perform an incredibly wide range of functions which we all take for granted in day-to-day -day life. Functions such as breathing, moving and digesting food, for example. Let's now turn our attention to anatomical language. When you learn anatomy, you'll quickly realise that it has a language of its own. When you learn muscles, you'll realise that the names of muscles are all in Latin or Greek and can be dissected to create a deeper understanding of the human body. Everyone knows of the muscle the bicep, right? Not many people know what anatomically bicep means though. In Latin, bicep means double-headed, bi meaning two, 
and sep or caput meaning head. So there are two heads of the bicep. All of a sudden, students start to go, hang on, tricep, which is at the back of the arm, that must have three heads. Then another student might go, oh, what about the quadricep? That must have four heads. You can see how knowing the Latin anatomical language can describe where muscles are or give information on the muscles. Locations in anatomy can be confusing too. For example, we might say that the stomach is inferior to the heart. This simply means that the stomach lies below the heart physically. There are a whole host of terms that once known make learning anatomy and physiology so much easier. Let's now end the video by looking at the meanings of some commonly used anatomical terms that describe where things are in the body. The first directional term we're going to look at is superior. Superior means towards the top of the head or closer to. We could describe the skull as being superior to the neck because the skull is above the neck. Inferior. Inferior means towards the feet or closer to. We could describe the intestines as being inferior to the stomach. Anterior. Anterior means in front or in front of. The abdominal muscles are anterior to the spine as they are in front of the spine. Posterior. Posterior means behind or in behind. The heart, for example, is inferior to the rib cage as it is behind the rib cage. Proximal. Proximal means closer to the attachment point of the limb to the midline of the body. For example, the shoulder is proximal to the elbow. Distal. Distal means that it is further away from the attachment point of the limb to the body or midline of the body. For example, the wrist is distal to the elbow joint. Superficial. Superficial means nearer to the surface of the body or on the surface of the body. For example, the skin is closer to the body than the heart. Therefore, the skin is superficial to the heart. Deep. Deep means the opposite of superficial, so further from the surface of the body. The lungs, for example, are deeper than the rib cage. Therefore, the lungs could be described as being deep to the ribs. Medial. Medial means towards the median or midline of the body. An example of this would be the sternum is closer to the midline of the body than the rib cage. Therefore, the sternum is medial to the rib cage. Lateral. Lateral means away from the median or midline of the body. An example of this would be that your arm is lateral to your sternum as it is further away from the midline of your body. Internal and external. Internal means away from the surface of the body, whereas external means towards the surface, so superficial. Let's take someone bleeding for example. External bleeding would suggest that you're able to see blood as it is a superficial wound near the surface of the skin. An internal bleed, however, you may not be able to visibly see blood as it is away from the surface of the body. Cranial and caudal. Cranial means towards the head and caudal means towards the tail. Finally, we have palmar and plantar. Palmar meaning the anterior surface of the hand or palm of the hand. This would be the part of the hand that you would give someone a high five with. Plantar means the sole of the foot. Normal walking, of course, involves walking on the soles of your feet. This concludes the third episode of my sports and exercise science series. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and don't forget to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub. I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you soon in the next episode where we begin study on the skeletal system.